Hello, uh, my name is Phil Monsanto and I'm the Timber Program Manager on the Mount Hood National Forest, uh, located here in Region 6 uh, in Northwestern Oregon. Um, today I was asked to um, talk about some of our experiences using an air curtain burner um, with some of our uh, post-fire recovery um, suppression rehab work. Um, so I'm happy to be here to talk and uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to um, start off with an introduction to biochar. I won't go into much detail, but um, uh, just talk to a little bit about it. And then I'll talk about uh, the technology of the air curtain burner. Uh, and then we'll dive right into some of our suppression rehab work using the air curtain burner, um, followed by some ideas that we've kind of been generating on how to monetize the biochar uh, for disposal. Uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about some of our media coverage, some of our lessons learned, and then finally some additional plans that we have for uh, the use of an air curtain burner on our forest. So what is biochar? Um, <clears throat> I guess biochar is a, is a charcoal-like substance produced in the absence of oxygen called pyrolysis, or conversely, through the over oxygenation of the combustion process to reach high temperatures to rap rapidly burn down organic material. Um, some of the properties that make biochar um, really, really useful in, in applications is that um, because of its porosity, porosity it can retain um, a lot of water. Um, it has these tiny holes, if you want to call them in that, which can hold soil microbes. Uh, which are important to convert elements such as nitrogen into usable nitrates and nitrites for plants. Because of its alkalinity, it can help to moderate soil pH, and because of its electrically charged surface, uh, it can chemically bind to heavy metals, especially for mining reclamation projects, or it can glom onto fertilizer and when um, dispersed onto the soil or ground, um, not only can it help to retain water, but it can actually um, help to slowly release fertilizer um, over time. So let's talk about the air curtain burner. It's a piece of equipment that uses a large fan and ventilation system to create a large and fast moving curtain of air across the top of a self-contained box. It was originally designed to burn large amounts of waste material safely, quickly, and clearly. And cleanly. Uh, the air circulates and feeds into the fire as it blows into a self-contained box. High temperatures are, are achieved which help to drive off moisture and even green material to quickly burn it quickly. The smoke and sparks are trapped beneath the curtain un unless it is temporarily broken by debris being dropped into it. Uh, once the debris has fallen completely under the curtain, the curtain once again becomes a complete sheet of air. The trapping of smoke and sparks help to increase the storage of carbon in the biochar product. Um, the technology has been around for you know, at least 15, 20 years. And um, there was a study that came out uh, from the San Dimas uh, Technology and Development Center uh, that looked at uh, what they were calling air curtain destructors for fuel reduction and disposal. And some of the things they found included that um, can produce lower smoke emissions compared to pile or broadcast burning. Uh, can burn a greater variety of amount in size and materials from dead to green vegetation. Gives you more flexibility. Uh, it can reduce fire risk and outbreak of insect problems. Um, can operate with fewer restrictions in weather and burn conditions. And uh, you can contain the burning area to a specific site. Just wanted to share that um, in this uh, study, they looked at some of the emissions uh, comparing the traditional burn piling uh, or uh, broadcast burning with air curtain burners, or this is what they called it. And you can see that the emissions for carbon monoxide, methane, uh, 2.5 uh, micron particulates um, were much less than the use of the air curtain burner. Similarly, the, or conversely, the carbon dioxide was about the same as traditional burning. 
So to give you a little background, um, in 2020, uh, the Mount Hood National Forest experienced uh, multiple uh, mega fires. So those are fires over 100,000 acres. And the one that I wanted to focus on was fire. Started on September 8th, uh, basically during the Labor Day weekend, um, we experienced uh, drastically low uh, um, humidity, uh, high temperatures, and then we were getting uh, easterly winds of up to 60 miles per hour, I think up to 100 degree, 100 miles per hour up at our, um, on, on Mount Hood itself near Timberline Lodge. Um, at its peak, it ran about 17 miles per hour. Uh, over just three or four days, it burned about 138,000 acres, of which 80,000 burned on the Mount Hood. Of that, roughly half burned with greater than 90% basal area loss. Uh, and during the operation, uh, we have a scenic byway, Highway 224, which the Oregon Department of Transportation manages. And they uh, were working on their phase one operations of um, their danger tree work. And just to give you an idea where we decided to try um, the air curtain burner because of the high volume of slash that was being just, uh, created by the operation um, is what we're calling the Memo's Way Station. So, so bear with me. And that's where we located um, the air curtain burner uh, when we were operating it. Um, the slash was brought here uh, during their danger tree operations. It was a fairly ideal location because of the adequate space. Um, we had a water source nearby the, the Clackamas River. Um, There's ample material to process. Uh, this picture is a representation of what we had there. And ODOT continued to feed that location with um, slash as they continue their operation. And because it was right by the highway there, uh, it was easy to bring material to the site. Um, we ended up working with a vendor uh, and um, we were actually able to hire the vendor using a, an emergency equipment re rental agreement uh, through the fire. So we ended up using the P code um, or um, or, a, or an S number created from that resource order. And, and what we had was this, the, what, what, what is called the Tiger Cat 6050. So it's made by Tiger Cat. Uh, they're known for other heavy equipment, but um, this is something that they uh, started selling, I believe in 2020. It takes about 30 to 60 minutes to get it to operational temperatures of about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you can see, um, that it can be remotely controlled. Um, it does have augers, uh, which help to um, uh, take out the biochar from the machine. And there's an optional conveyor belt that can be used to make piles of biochar once they're produced. Just to give you some ideas of what it could do. So I'll just take you or show you a few videos. This is an excavator loading up the, the, bio, the, the air curtain burner. The next video kind of shows it. You can see blasted air. you break that uh, air curtain. And then the last video here kind of gives you an idea of product, product. Okay. Um, since then, we've actually used it on other operations on forest. So the, the top two pictures uh, come from uh, the, two, the 2021 bull complex. It was a 24,000 acre fire, primarily uh, burning in wilderness, but um, and with anticipation of it escaping the, uh, the wilderness, there were contingency uh, and secondary lines 
uh, that were created um, outside of the wilderness uh, in case the fire um, escaped and got onto uh, matrix land allocation or other land allocations. Um, and there was a lot of slash developed or created from that, and that's why we brought in the air curtain burner to try to process that. Uh, and then the two pictures, the one on the bottom right and the bottom left, those are also from the Riverside fire um, from another danger tree operation that uh, the forest actually undertook. Uh, we um, consolidated the, the slash from that operation to uh, a fairly nice location, um, a wide area, and that's where we had it uh, work its, um, or process the, the, the slash that was created there. The one in the lower middle was on the lion's head fire um, where we tried to use it before it got snowed out. So. Just to help with estimating how much your slash piles may weigh or how many tons, I just wanted to share this pile estimator that was developed by the Pacific Northwest Research Station uh, here in uh, over in Seattle, Washington. And uh, it's, it's fairly useful, it's fairly intuitive. You can you know, create estimates for piles either created by hand or my machine figure out the dimensions, the packing ratio, uh, composition by species, uh, even the quality of the pile, and it'll give you some outputs on how many tons of slash there is. And if you burnt it um, through traditional measures, uh, what would be the emissions of 2.5 micron material, carbon monoxide, methane, and, and, other, and, and other gaseous compounds. So I, I wanted to make a comparison of some other means of managing the slash. So um, I'm not sure how successful I was, but it hopefully gives you an idea. Um, you know, if you processed the slash uh, using a grinder, a chipper versus um, the air curtain burner that we used. And, you know, um, just looking online um, and estimating that the slash that, you sh that I, um, at the memo station uh, to be about 400 plus tons. Uh, you know, I figure the rates per day in tons, I'm sorry, the rates per hour in tons that it could uh, process and how long it would take to process that 400 tons. Uh, but on the right side here, this table, I was trying to give an idea of what it would take to haul the material out. And just to give you an idea of the air curtain burner and its ability to densify the slash, um, for about, I don't know, every 100 tons of slash that you uh, burn with the air curtain burner, you're left with about 5 to 10 tons of biochar. So that's about, um, was it 90 to 1 or 20 to 1, I'm sorry. And, uh, you know, given a 40-foot trailer or 20-yard dump truck, um, you know, Gives you an idea of how many loads it would take to haul out chips and grounded material versus the biochar. Um, if you think about it, you're, if you process 400 plus tons of, uh, of slash through a grinder, you're still left with 400 plus tons of chipped or grounded material. So let's talk about you know selling large and small quantities. Uh, of the biochar. Um, and this was a brainstorming session we had earlier this year in January or February. Right now, Region 6, and I believe other regions don't have a history of appraising and selling value-added products. Um, and of course, biochar is not listed as a product in our timber information management system. So how do we find value in the biochar? Um, you know, we felt that the process needs to be simple, reasonable, and ensure fair payments. It allows to be visually inspectable for loads or gallons to ensure contract permit compliance. Um, we, we considered a 10% discount on the actual amount of tons out there because we, we expect some would be left on site after all the loading was completed. And then in terms of appraising the biochar, um, you know, we, we felt that the biochar would likely be sold under wet weight. 
Um, although in retail it's sold dry weight. So it's unknown how this would affect appraisal. Uh, and then of course the different grades of biochar and prices may vary uh, based on the source material. And at this point, we're not sure what our Forest Service biochar's quality is like. Although primarily it was made from uh, the consumption of uh, Douglas fir, Western hemlock, and some and some hardwoods. So, um, you know, we need to develop a process to obtain gallons at USFS locations. Um, we needed to calculate the number of tons to sell and then appraise the biochar to get selling price per ton. And then with the water conversion factor, uh, we, we divide that by the tons and uh, you know, multiply this by five to get five gallon buckets uh, that we would sell as a minimum uh, volume. Uh, through some internet sleuthing, we found that biochar at the retail sells for about 100 $500 per ton, but in smaller quantities could range up to $1,700 per ton. So we looked at an assortment of vendors who would sell um, biochar. Uh, you know, we got you know, a wide range, you know, so $75 per five gallons at Home Depot, which equates to about $476 per ton. Uh, and I think we got as high as $562, $562 per ton at uh, another vendor. Uh, you know, that was found off the internet. It averaged about $291 to ton. And using that value, uh, divide that by the water uh, factor, multiply that by five to get about $60 for a five gallon bucket. Uh, and that would be our starting retail price um, for special forest product appraisal. Um, some of the options to sell if we were able to take that route is to advertise by char with one or more lump sum payment units. Um, we would use the 2400-3P contract um, for uh, non-convertible uh, products that can't be measured in um, cubic feet. And then uh, we'd sell by ton. And one of the questions we have is, you know, you know uh, with the Forest Service, would we require low tickets or how would that work? And then in smaller quantities, uh, we would use uh, free use permits or use another uh, permit to sell at a five gallon um, minimum quantity. Um, we did get some media coverage. Uh, or got out slowly about our operation, and um, you know, Capital Press uh, sent out a, a journalist to, to to look at our operation and um, put that on Twitter and also on their Capital Press website. And then the USBI, um, I think it's the United States Biochar Initiative, um, put the that story onto their newsletter. And the Forest Service also has been you know, further uh, looking at um, uh, another air curtain burner made by Charboss. I think the, in this example, um, they were using it to try to get rid of some, uh, some noxious weeds along the Oregon coast there. Some of the lessons learned we from from the use of the biochar or the air burner was uh, um, the size of the equipment and optional equipment requires a bit of space, so that's why that first location was pretty ideal. So um, we found in other locations a conveyor belt um, uh, couldn't be actually applied because of the tighter space. Um, we 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 felt that finding a central location to minimize transport of the air curtain burner was pretty key because you know that would reduce the cost. It can be walked short distances, approximately one mile per hour on track. So, um, water source is essential because um, that's what's used to cool the biochar as it's fed out by the auger. So, um, need to make that uh, some consideration in your decision to use air curtain burners. Uh, we found from the vendor 
the aircraft burner that the preferred size was medium sized logs with tops, but essentially can burn anything. And then work with your air quality regulatory agencies to make sure they understand what the air curtain burners um, uh, capabilities are, what its emissions are. Um, you know, and then, um, you know, uh, with the Forest Service or I guess with the states, you know, you, you, you know, with a 10 to 14 hour run time, just need to make sure you're working within the industrial fire precaution class levels, um, especially here in Oregon and Washington. And that was pretty important because uh, we were operating the air curtain burner in late June, early July for about 20, 30 days uh, before um, the nas nationally we reached a preparedness level five and then uh, IFPL four. So it basically meant, you know, shut down any equipment. And finally, um, you know, we were able to use the P code on a, on, on, to fire to run the air curtain burner with our suppression rehab. But can you, other projects where you're not gonna be re relying on a fire, can you look at salvage KV grants, um, other, other, other shorthand codes to help uh, fund the project? And we have some uses for the biochar on forest. Uh, we have some pollinator gardens that um, are being, uh, constructed and the, the biochar will be used to you know to on, on the ground uh, and there's some other soil remediation projects across the forest and then we have a backlog of piles and maybe some stand improvement work where an air curtain burn can be used and then um, we need to start or have been starting to look at uh, plans to sell or strengthen some agreements with other uh, federal and non-federal uh, uh, agencies to see if we can uh, dispose of the biochar uh, in these mechanisms, if it can't be used on forest. Uh, I just want to say thanks to a few people who helped out with the initial operation because it, it took a lot of lifting, um, basically a, making the, the concept understandable and um, having folks open enough to uh, be flexible to, to try this out because the use of an air curtain burner for post-fire recovery or suppression or rehab work, to our knowledge, hasn't been done before. Just want to say thank you.